Hello everybody, welcome back to AndyTube. I'm going to uh, start a new series on uh, restoring the Singer Model 404. And I've mentioned in other times this is probably my most favorite sewing machine. And uh, I thought what I would do is uh, kind of just do a step-by-step -step dismantling. This is how I uh, dismantle the machine, the parts that I want to take off so that I can do uh, cleaning. And uh, I thought I'd play a little game that I sometimes play with myself called Name That Part. And uh, what I'll try and do is give the formal singer name for the part. Um, what I mean by that is the, what Singer called the part in their adjuster's manual, service manual, um, their ordering form, their parts book, catalogs, things like that. Um, I found that early on I could never remember the parts numbers and every part of every machine has a number, but I kind of got used to the name and uh, I'll try and give some common names too to the part but when I start on a machine like this uh, this is what I do I start at the bottom and uh, that's where I'll start today this is called the well you, you know what let me put it back up here just for a second to say this is the bed this part here is the bed. This is the upright or the vertical. This is the arm. And this is the face. Also sometimes called the nose. So and that's on a domestic machine. <coughs> um, so when I start at the bottom Singer calls this the bed cover plate. Now a lot of people call it the drip pan, the oil pan, the oil drip pan. Um, so we, we start off taking this bed cover plate screw thumb nut off. And it's just a thumb nut. <laughs> so between that and the bed cover plate is a bed cover plate screw thumb nut washer felt piece of felt here just to protect this and to prevent uh, rattling while you're sewing now that I've got those parts off I can pull off the bed cover plate and what that thumb nut goes on and why it's named that way this is the bed cover plate screw and it actually is a screw you can put a screwdriver on it and turn it in and out of the housing right there and on the top side or inside of the bed cover plate is the bed cover plate felt this one is in pretty good shape um, You'll find sometimes these loaded with lint and and uh, other debris, and a lot of times they smell pretty funky from all the excess oiling that's happened over the years. So I've got that part off now. So I would turn the uh, I would turn the machine back up and next thing that I would take off would be this cover and this is called the arm top cover I, I don't know why they call it the top cover I don't know of any bottom covers but I'm assuming that on some machines there was some kind of bottom covers of the arm but anyway they call it the arm top cover and like a lot of uh, Singer machines, especially the vintage, there's two screws. Um, and of course they're called the arm top cover screws. So 
We're going to back these off uh, enough to get them loose and then we can just lift the uh, lift the arm cover up and away and this when all of these little attachments that you see are on here it's called the arm top cover complete and you can take off thread guides and some of the ones that have bobbin winders built into the top you can you can take uh, those apart but when it's all assembled with any other part it's called the arm top cover complete and here's one of the arm top cover screws so we've got that part off put it aside here next I would move on to the face plate also known as the nose cover and when I have the arm top cover off uh, you know this swings open and there's a thread threading diagram in here but there's two little pins in the face plate that it hinges on and they're called the face plate hinge pins so this is the face plate which can now be lifted and moved aside and here are the little face plate hinge pinges okay done next what I would uh, get in here would be I'd like to take this uh, tension unit and I call the tension unit Singer calls it the tension graduated adjustable complete when all these little parts are assembled tension graduated adjustable complete you know, can, there's a little uh, tension stud set screw right here in the uh, face area here the set screw grows against the tension stud the tension stud is what everything is uh, attached to so if we go in there I can loosen that come in here with my left hand maybe and you don't you don't take it out like most set screws you just back it off a couple of turns and then this tension unit should wiggle out and you can see the end of the tension stud right there that's where the set screw goes against so I've got that off now and then I want to take off these um, thread guides, and this is this is probably my most famous uh, favorite screw on the machine. This little screw right here. It's it's you know there's nothing much special about it except the name, and I guess that's why I. That's why I always liked it. The name of that screw is the slack thread regulator and tension thread guide and thread guide upper screw. So it holds these two thread guides on and we'll back it out here. And on a machine like this they might be, the thread guides might be stuck to the machine but I hold them just in case and this first part is called the uh, tension thread regulator and tension thread guide that's this first piece that comes off because with that off you can slip this off and this part is just the tension thread guide upper. So now I've got the tension unit and the tension area thread guides all off of there. So the last thing I would do while I'm up at the front of this 
is take off the light cover and this is called the light lamp shade light lamp shade it's held on by two screws some of the 400 series there's just one screw up here in the center they both serve the same purpose which is to shade the, the light bulb so of course if this is the light lamp shade you know that these are going to be called the light lamp shade screws so we'll get those out of here oh these have never been off before I don't think it's not often I see these I'll show you what I mean um, uh, around the screw and behind the head is a little spring like to keep tension on it and, and most times I don't see that. It was like if anybody ever took that off at a shop or to, to change the light bulb, they just toss these little springs. So there is the lampshade itself. And it's got a magnifying glass thing and a little clamp and screw to hold that in place. And this is one of the uh, light lampshade screws and there's that little spring wow I, I, I really don't see these very much anymore oh this one is on real tight maybe that's why it's still there it didn't fall off and, and get lost so there's two of these that hold the, the lampshade on you know so I think that's enough for the first one, get, getting all these covers and stuff off. I guess I would take out the light bulb, and Singer calls it the light bulb. Sometimes they call it a lamp. It's a bayonet style. Just pushes in and twist. Push in and twist back to come out. And there's two little ears. You, you can't put it in wrong because the ears fit in slots so you just got to kind of twist it until you find it and then push in and twist forward to s for install push in and twist away from you for removal so that's uh, my first one on here I think uh, next next video I'll do the uh, bobbin and hook area disassembly with this stuff and I should have time in that video to do the face up here get the presser bar and needle bar and things like that off so that's a good beginning and I hope you found that interested and uh, according to my granddaughter I'm supposed to say comment like the share but I want to just say thanks for watching and take care.